Today we start on the far end of Double Hill Run Road on the south side of the Rakaia and we travel across the Rakaia River around uh, Manuka Point and we uh, make our way up uh, Mathis Valley to uh, hopefully we get to the Mathis Hut. Do you want me behind Dad, Scott? No, you're behind me and just your dad behind you and Neil will bring up the rear. I just couldn't seem to get him on this radio. Well, you got your radio on, Dad? Sweet as, we're all moving. Oh. <laughs> wow, that was a handy reminder. I haven't. <laughs> It actually was my plan. It was the way to remind folk. It uh, was put to me once and I thought, oh, I like that. Yes, yeah, so we're uh, crossing the uh, Rakaia. I didn't like that. see how much water's in here the rivers are still running low um, I think I had a look it was 70 cumex but that's measured down in the Rakaia Gorge where um, above where the Wilberforce or the Avoca and the Harper so water's the running down here on the diagonal like the wee exit there. so this is just the Rakaia headwaters basically we're crossing you're all good Alan no worries See how braided it is. I think it'll be more than this one channel. It hasn't been in flood for quite a while, so they've got a good good road through here. There's a station across here that's uh, got to drive in and out, or helicopter over in the flood. So we're going to head up the Mathis. Valley, Mathis River up to the Mathis Hut. But there's generally always a crossing across the Rakaia here by these power lines. It's the only spot to cross. Often you get the Rakaia this benign and with such a well defined track, it's just too easy. It's quite good, it's braided into a couple of channels. Not all the water's not in the one. So it'll be the first time I've been up here, up, up to the Mathis. I've been up the Rakaia to the um, Rhine, Rhine, I'll have to have a look at that one, um, the name of the hut. When you think in town that those power poles are how, uh, in the ground about 1.3 metres, and that one's not even in the ground, it's quite interesting. <laughs> Yeah, they must be under some force from time to time, that's for sure, because I mean, that's incredibly easy now, crossing here, you never really sort of see it like this very often. Uh, and normally, if, you know, you're picking away trying to find a bit of an old track, which has been done in the recent past, I suspect. Uh, so that's great, I mean, it's nice to know you don't have to uh, deal with marginal rivers. I'm quite happy to have a nice, easy track, no, easy trip, and a fire and some beer. Further along towards the station itself, the actual hut, uh, 
outside the house, um, the big lodge, there is a little box um, and you can go in there and write your details down if you choose to. It's not a requirement. Um, some people do do that if they're going to be up there hunting for days or weeks and that sort of stuff. Um, it's not a bad idea. Makes a change driving through a bit of water. This is a, a serious wee side stream. So, so this one gets a bit deeper? In the centre it's a little deeper, but it's nothing to be concerned about. You can be a wee bit loose too, but I think you're through okay. All the water channels are, are fairly low at the moment. It's, um, that's one that often, if the requires up a wee bit, um, you can go through the end, it looks nice and shallow, and then suddenly in the middle it uh, just pops up over the bottom. No drama today. Although I did see Wayne get a bit of water up there, he must have plunged in a bit. <laughs> yes, that was um, a bit more water than uh, the braided ones we went across. in my little oven here. I've got two little pizzas for lunch. Probably about an hour away until they're hot enough. What do you got for lunch today, Alan? Uh, I got some chips. <laughs> Sounds good. Might do some noodles. Cool. Well, I was probably thinking about half twelve, quarter to one. I'll just pull up for lunch. I'll do my little bits of me. Hot enough there, and we'll just stop wherever we happen to be. There's some nice, pretty places along this track in, and I'm just looking to my sharp left there, and it's blue sky. It looks like we're heading to, so that's just so good. Fantastic. If you're in low, Alan, or not, but you can probably sit in high for a while here. Yeah, I'm already in high. Of, um, entrance to the valley, it's quite a, a loop around. It's a private 
a track over to the left which takes you right there, but you know, we can't really use it. Um, so this is a nice, a nice look down at the, uh, the surround and the mountains and then you sort of turn towards them. Um, and at the end of the track you just drop into the riverbed and I love that there. Just sort of changes it all. Looks like you are really off on an adventure then. Yeah, it's a beautiful valley, loving all the snow. It's the um, beauty about going out in winter, the mountains look fantastic. Yeah, well hopefully we'll get a bit of snow as far down as on the ground. That would be nice at some stage before winter's gone. The sun's finally out, new beauty. Have a nice afternoon. It's a bit cloudy back in Timaru, so uh, it's nice up here. nothing wrong with the way we've come. Absolutely, yeah. And I've got a signage there, so um, so yeah, unauthorised um, access along that, that track. Alright, we'll see if there's any water in this river. The Mathis River. Beautiful valley. heading uh, pretty near right up as far as you can see there. You've got Topo up now and you'll find opposite Matthias hut. There's another hut there that's private. We tried to cross over there once, it's got three quarters of the way. We're just going to go over and take a photograph, you know, because otherwise we're going to park up and walk up. It was very, very rough so we had to turn back. But, um, yeah, one day I wouldn't mind um, getting there. It was hard going in vehicles, so we decided we didn't need to break anything that far away. The rain hut, it looks like it's built. There's a track through that grass there, but it's still there. Oh yeah, it looks like a wee entrance here. That's good. Coming up with someone that's been up here before. It is, it is good, and I was going to say we're um, lucky with the weather, but um, obviously it's well planned as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, best you can. <laughs> it's all about the river number one, isn't it? And if the weather's good, that's just brilliant. That's the beauty bit. An idea where it's six inches of snow just to top the whole fairy tale off, but um, <laughs> that's pretty darn good. It's the beauty about short notice trips. Uh, you can, you know what the weather's doing. Um, unfortunately, when you're in a club, you probably plan your trips uh, quite a, quite a lot earlier. So it's potluck. But then again, bad weather is sometimes uh, some fantastic uh, four-wheel driving as well. Bit of a washout. Pretty darn pretty, alright. I just hope there is a wee bit of water further up there. It just adds to a very pretty valley further up. Yes, we want a bit of water. Everything's been way too dry. 
we're being a bit fussy, aren't we? We, we want a bit of water, you know, but we don't want uh, too much so we can't cross the river. And then we'd, we'd like a bit of snow on the ground too, you know, but not too much. <laughs> Got the window down so there's more, more noise coming from my snorkel. Someone asked me what sort of exhaust I was running, but no, the noise is from my snorkel. Some up. Uh, I suppose we see a wee cluster. Uh, I think Alan and uh, Wayne have got the bags, so they're probably pretty good, but yeah, if there's a few bits, I reckon why not? If we've got any space to put some in, in the car, it'd be a good idea. I've got some charcoal as well. Well, we've picked up a bit of firewood for tonight. In case there's none, none at the hut. We're bringing in firewood from town as well. Good to leave extra at the hut if we've got extra. That's if we're in the hut. We might be camping yet. We don't know. There could be hunters. There's hunters up here. The last few weekends there's been hunters everywhere. There's been a lot of hunters up here. This track is well formed. I mean, it would have got washed out the last flood, but it's it's uh, incredible. Mate, right, so you know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's all good. Packing the lines a little bit better and going just a little bit slower. Can only be a good thing. Avoiding those, you know, perfectly flat rocks. Trouble is, the one that does the damage generally you haven't seen. So we've lost the form track, um, as in fact, it just might not be up here. We're a wee bit further up, so um, it probably floods quite a bit. And there's, um, yeah, like even we're not leaving a form track with four vehicles running over it. Did that make a noise when the wood went up and hit your vehicle? Uh, yeah, that was quite painful. Look to the left there, you see a stick. And I think it's got some stones underneath it. So it would have been about probably where the old track was. Whether it's still relevant, we'll have a wee look. Dad might be an easier spot to the left a little bit more, or just give it a go. 
There's an easier opening along this way if you want to. I think you heard about that. I was able to go up, no wheel spin. It's a very capable yoke that for uh, open dips all around. If there's snow on the ground. So what do you got, Ellen? Uh, two lockers? Yeah, I have now triple locked. Ooh, triple. Back to red only had the centre, the block, but I got eaten E lockers, front and rear now. Alright, do you use them much? Yeah, I've been using the rear locker, all the little climbs we've been going through here and the bigger boulder and stuff, but I'm a bit shy on the front locker now. Gully, nice wee gully. So we're getting into it now. What are they chasing up here? Is this tar country or just deer or what? Uh, definitely deer was on that private block. I know that. I saw, saw a video of that. And down this low and through these uh, to our left, and they uh, probably get some shimmy up there. Right up on those crags to our left, definitely tar and jamming up to the right. Deer don't go that high as my understanding. I've never really done much. I've never hunted tar or shamming. Um, I do want to. Apparently the rangatata out is really good for it. Yeah, there were a lot of hunters up there last weekend. I'm thinking, I'm thinking at the base of these trees here, there's a nice sweet spot, we'll do lunch. Uh, I smell my little peeps in there. Uh, I'll probably even get on this grass section here. What do you reckon? Anyway, mate, I'm more than happy whatever we do. Sounds good. Yes, but um, I don't know if that's really possible. So we'll try down here. Was a nice wee lunch stop. Now we'll carry on back up the valley. Three hunters on the uh, quad bikes ahead of us. Uh, it was a bit of a worry. We were um, guessing that they'd be uh, hit staying in the hut we were heading for. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens there. Places because of all the hunters coming up here, the track is um, quite defined, so so it's not so boulder hopping. Even across here, the boulders we're following a track, and um, otherwise we'd be hitting boulders left, right, and centre. Oh, this looks uh, interesting.
Lovely. Nice and slow. This is my first, I've been four wheel driving for um, over a decade and I've never been up here. And it's just one of the local Canterbury rivers. But you've got to cross the require to get here. So it takes a bit of um, planning or the river to be in, in the right condition to come up here. And I'm quite excited about how far we are going to go up this valley. It's um, it's starting to get interesting. It's good. I can see when the vehicle in front of me hits the uh, the diff hits the rocks. I just try and take a different line. Go slow over that bit, speed up over the flat bits. Catch up so I can follow the wheel tracks. You're driving by feel. <laughs> that was a wee rocky spot we've just gone through. these guys but go slow over the big big ones but it's important you stay in touch see where they're going what they're hitting Just getting ready for his nighttime shoot. Yeah, I'm hoping these guys at the bikes are just out for a um, bit of a day run. I 
do this for fun. <laughs> Which is more important, the journey or the destination? Well, it's uh, which is more enjoyable, I suppose, would be the word, the journey or the destination. Satisfaction after completing a trip sometimes is great as well. And um, the satisfaction I get after posting a video and um, and thank you everyone that uh, like my videos and subscribe you know and comment you know I, I appreciate it um, more than more than people uh, I I did not think my videos would do as good as they have um, especially um, Napoleon Hill so thank you very much for everyone who subscribed and uh, or liked just hit the thumbs up as I appreciate it. Thank you. Ooh. <laughs> oh, my car's thanking you too then. <laughs> I don't think it is actually. I'll track in is over to the left. It's um, we couldn't quite pick it up coming in. It might have been washed away in a section. So unfortunately, yeah, we're just going to have to cross this to, um, to pick it up. Ooh, get a bit of an upper body workout hanging on to the steering wheel I believe the hut is across the river in front of us or the the track to the hut is off the grassy um, bit of grass over there, grassy bank. Ooh, it's a big rock. We're heading back towards the, uh, the proper track. So we must have got a bit lost there. I think we've come around about 15 kilometres up the river. So it's a fair way. Bit of zigging and zagging. And we've, we've gained a bit of elevation, even looking back at the riverbed. I can, I can feel we're a lot higher now. And there's, at some stage, you just can't cross the river because it's just bluffs you out. Uh, it's incredible. We're getting, wow, right up there amongst the headwaters. To, uh, two o'clock. We perhaps stopped for lunch for 25 minutes or so. Impression of a track there, but well, mine's a little further to the left a wee bit, so I'm just going to pursue that and see if we can find it. I think we're crossing the river around about 11 o'clock, so we've um, 
Yeah, we're, we're a good two and a half hours driving. It's the hot stuff. Up the riverbed. Uh, yar. Thank you, Doug. So there's a bit of weather over the west coast, just trying to poke its way through the um, valleys. It's not forecast to uh, drop a lot of rain or anything. But that's where the wind is coming from. It's quite Still quite pleasant here. Still nine degrees. Bit of wind. Hopefully I get a view up the around the corner up the valley from the hut. Valley ticked it off. The track's just on the other side of the Mount Carry, to be honest. Getting in there. But this is a wee bit gnarly. Um, sit tight. Sit tight. a better line, that was good. Going back. Here's the other boys. Checking out their damage. Well I was pleased I doubled back instead of going through that minefield you guys drove through. straight in ahead of us. But we've got to loop around apparently. So it wasn't too bad a run up here. Um, obviously it can be a lot worse. Oh, it can't be much better. <laughs> we've got a pretty ideal conditions for the, a lot of people have uh, come up and down here since the last time it flooded. Here we go, driving into the hut. You beauty. Getting a thirst on. I don't think I'll be having a cup of tea. After arriving at the hut, the uh, hunters that were in their quad bikes, they uh, had got the fire going for us and uh, they weren't staying the night. They were um, just uh, on, a, on a wee day trip from their private hut. They were down, staying in down below. So uh, yeah, we just checked out this track. We should have come in and make sure it was all go for us to leave uh, that way um, in the morning. Mathis hut, we're packing up. Good night. Good night uh, in there uh, last night. I was sleeping in the vehicle. Here's the head of the valley. It was uh, clouded ye yesterday, so I couldn't see it. I was pleased to see it this morning. And then we'll look down the valley. There were some hunters uh, just day tripping yesterday. They were staying somewhere down the valley. 
that's down the valley, that's where we're going out, out here. So the long drop over there, and then this is the uh, firewood. So we collected some from the riverbed, we've put what we've got left over in here, and um, I'd advise people to bring firewood. We brought firewood as well as collected some. That we, uh, the wee container here, that's where you put your $5. I slept in my, um, in my vehicle last night, but I'll slip $5 in there. Uh, it's a New Zealand deer stalker. Well, I got coins. Yeah, I'm putting it in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, I slept in my car last night, but I still stayed in the hut, so um, I'm still using the. I appreciate the facilities. Yeah, they're good, good facilities to have a hut. Come on, come on, and I'll show you inside. <laughs> right, we had the had had the fire going. I think the fire's. Still going, we had that going. It's bunk beds, so there's six here, six beds. There was only two guys sleeping in here. We, uh, we, uh, had, had a few beers though, a few yarns with the fire going, it was good. There's a traditional hut book. I'll, I uh, might put my name in there. And we had, had a wee yarn in the afternoon out in the veranda. Not many huts have a veranda. Nice veranda out here. With a bit of a bit of a view. But um, but uh, thank you to the um, the Rakaia branch of the Deer Stalkers Association. This hut is um, is there. It's five dollars a night. All users five dollars a night. Per person donation, so it's well, it's well worth it. Yeah. Beautiful morning. Mathis Valley. Beautiful day. Not a breath of, breath of wind. Having a uh, cup of coffee. Morning, morning tea stop. Great to be alive. Better on camera, so uh, yeah, just let me sit up there and turn around. <laughs>